Welcome to another update, making the game Wraithbinder. And this week I've been adding in attributes. So far, got a defense attribute, an attack attribute, a dexterity attribute, and a power attribute. I'm trying to keep things pretty simple so that this game can be friendly for, I say young adults, up to you know whatever age you are it doesn't matter but um, I've noticed that when I played this with my friends last week I played with friends and their kids and um, one important thing I wanted to I wanted to get with Wraithbinder was that it would be accessible for people of all ages because I noticed man the kids loved playing this game and they always wanted to try things out um, so I want to keep things pretty simple as far as like you know the attributes aren't too extensive but then again I don't know, this might be more appealing to um, uh, the, the more hardcore gamer, and maybe they do want to have those kinds of attributes. But first, I want to try out these simple attributes. So what defense is, is it basically uh, raises your uh, your ratio whenever an attack happens. Let's go and um, let's start out uh, an actual match here. Um, you start off with a defense of 8 and um, an attack of 8, and uh, all of your attributes are basically 8. Um, so you're pretty close to a level up and when you you gain experience for by finding matches and you'll be able to level up and Choose to increase your dexterity Your power whatever you want to do. So what what it does is um, it takes your attack um, Your attack attribute whenever you get attacked by someone else it takes your attack attribute or when you attack someone else Sorry, uh, it takes your attack attribute and then divides it by the other players defense attribute and that gives you a ratio which multiplies by the base damage of the weapon you're using and there you have basically how attack versus defense works and then dexterity basically just increases your movement speed for now that's all it does and then power is what's gonna have what's gonna um what influences the damage that all of your abilities do that aren't melee attacks like your bow weapon your ghost sword um using buildings to attack even and um, throwing grenades, all those kinds of things depend on your, your power attribute. So this is pretty exciting um, because it's finally adding in this sort of, uh, more of these long-term um, elements to the gameplay, right? You're, you're, oh, this guy's almost dead. Oh, wait, he wasn't dead. Um, you're adding in these attributes and stuff like that. So when you're going between the ship and back to the battle and you're playing the game loop, um, things, um, things are a little bit more interesting because you're like, oh, should I, well, next time you go back to the ship and you have some diamonds to spend, you're like, hmm, what am I going to spend my diamonds on? You go over here to this and you're like, hey, I could get a helmet. It's going to cost me eight diamonds, it appears right now. This is, um, I need to work on this here. This 26 to eight, it's, these numbers aren't, aren't quite, uh, clear enough to me. Or I could get these pauldrons here. This attack, this increases my attack by one. Also increases my defense by one. Short cloaks, medium cloaks, etc. All this stuff does different, gives you different attributes. Same with the weapons over here. We've got swords. The short nano sword increases your attack, uh, but decreases your dexterity a little bit. Um, the guard sword increases your defense, but decreases your dexterity. The medium sword, same kind of stuff. Medium sword increases your dexterity? That's a typo. Anyways. That's how it works. So I'm excited to have this all in here. And in, in, um, also one of the things I did recently was to make these sort of big models for all the, the items. See how that, that axe is, is pretty big compared to the player. Um, it's because it is twice as big as the player. Check us out in Magicka. I created all these double sized models for the items. So like that item sword what we were just looking at. Or the axe, sorry, it was the item axe. There's that axe. It's pretty big, right? It's double size. I went in and re revoxeled things to make sure they all look really good in these uh, in these zoom in these bigger double sizes. So that's kinda cool. And then the other thing I'd like to do to the whole uh, buying items system is to make things a little bit, make it zoom in when you're about to buy an item. There's currently an issue with this with this split screen going where I, I can't zoom in um, when I'm in split screen mode because it changes the 
anchor point or the anchor point isn't quite set correctly for for these things so that's something i need to work on as well but the goal is eventually to have it when you preview an item it zooms the camera in so you can really see what's going on in fact i might even just switch to the inventory screen that's one of the next things i'm working on is the actual inventory screen so you can see what the heck all your attributes are right now you have no clue what your attributes are how many diamonds you have what equipment you're currently wearing what your armor looks like all that kind of stuff so the goal is to have an inventory screen you press a button and um, it'll show you your your inventory I guess I remap that button or something anyways there'll be some kind of inventory screen and then I'd like to have the inventory screen show a really zoomed in cool looking uh, model so um, let's go to one of the model cache and we can see something let's just look at that <laughs> This is a really short player um, aiming. This is the aim animation. So, right, you would see something. Let's actually not go use the aim animation. Let's look at an idle animation. It makes it a little bit clearer what we're talking about here. Uh, idle, there we go. There, there's, there's one of these characters, idle animations. This is what I'm kind of imagining it might look like in your inventory screen. You actually see your character, maybe they're rotating, it's definitely animated, like he's actually breathing like he does in this idle animation. In fact, if I, yeah, that's that's the next frame where his, his neck is a little bit, oops, he's, he's sort of like squishing up his neck in this frame. Uh, but anyways, imagine that animated um, on the inventory screen, I think it would look so cool, like you want to go and uh, to put on a different helmet. You can e immediately see that you're wearing a different helmet. So that's what I'll be working on next. And um, other than that, it's been a really productive week. I actually got um, all of the build working for Windows. So I've got all my Windows project files set up. Proud of that. That's um, uh, that's that was something you needed to get done, right? Need to get this window ver Windows version going. So um, the way the Wraithbinder is is programmed, I've got basically an abstraction layer to my game engine called KitFu. KitFu is sort of my own game engine in a way, but yet it really uses other game engines underneath it. And KitFu now has the project files to compile completely on Windows. We've got the, the solution, the VCX prods, the filters, and everything. And I've been using VMware, the latest version, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I load up this uh, Windows 10 64-bit uh, OS, and I get in there with Visual Studio 2019, and uh, build up um, all these Windows files. So I'm excited to have this sort of like all organized and working and this compiles completely with no warnings, no errors. So that's great. So this compiles into a live file and then I've got to go and actually do all the files for Wraithbinder's actual source as well. So we've got KitFu compiling completely. Next is to get all these other files for uh, Wraithbinder compiling successfully, which shouldn't be too much of an issue now that I've got all the KitFu stuff going because it did actually take a moment there was some stuff like uh, string conversions from 16-bit to 8-bit were a huge thing of getting those refined lots of little differences between Microsoft Visual C++ compilation and Xcode's compilation which is Clang based or at least I'm using the Clang compiler um, here in Xcode and I, I noticed that Visual Studio 2019 does have the ability to compile with Clang but I haven't tried it uh, I kinda like the fact that I'm using two different compilers because it helps me catch more issues like I can see, oh hey, this um, this compiler is not liking the fact that um, th this piece of code is not quite meeting the C++ 17 standard or something like that, and somehow Clang allowed it. Whatever, it just helps all my code to be a little bit tighter. So there you have it, another video making the game Wraithbinder, and um, we'll come at you with another video later on. See ya.